welcome to this last session of the day. Um, we have some slides. So, first slide. Thank you to all our sponsors. And this one's going to come up another time. So, then a little bit about me. I've been training for a while. Trainer now since 2001. Uh, country lead for IMCT for the Netherlands, regional leads, and uh, brand new certified ethical instructor. And yes, I'm very pleased with that. <laughs> so, I brought some extra people. Uh, George, can you introduce yourself for the people? Yes, I can. Please do so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a young MCT. I just, um, well, I just started my career in IT. What else? Who you are, what you do here. Okay, and I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> great, great. Then, Kyle. Um, my name is Kyle Rosenthal. Uh, my voice is slightly improving since yesterday. <laughs> uh, I'm from Australia and MCT now for uh, 17 years. I've been in the IT industry for about uh, 25 years now. So, yeah. Okay. Hank? I'm Hank from the Netherlands. Uh, have been an MCT since was it uh, 98 so quite a long time and yeah I'm having fun here <laughs> great right. last one Tiago hi I'm Tiago I'm from Portugal and what should I say more present myself oh world peace <laughs> no, and I'm, a, I'm an MCT for uh, I'm like a baby MCT here on this stage <laughs> I'm only MCT for 12 13 years <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. So there's going to be a, a forum discussion about what do we do before the break. And in a forum discussion, well, we have the four people in there. But we have some other people in the room as well. And that's uh, you. So please participate in the discussion and see what we can all bring up. Whee. So, this is actually the questions. What do we do before the break? And when do we do it? And why do we do it? Uh, is there something special you do to start off with? That sounds a little strange. Um, me, for instance, some countries where I train, all the people come up and shake your hand. In other situations, you're just in the classroom and just trying to see whether everything is set up all right. Are the labs available? Are all the accounts there, especially with, uh, with the cloud classes? You must have had the same type of experience. What do you guys do when you get into class, first thing? So, you're actually not talking at the break, but the beginning of class. Before the first break, what do you do before the first break, before you send them off for coffee? I teach them. You teach them. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Okay, so I, I can start. Uh, the first thing that I do is I usually check if I have all the, the materials because some training centers are not quite, let's just say, organized uh, in getting all the stuff in the quantities that you need. They always forget a, like a voucher for something. Uh, usually now I'm teaching more and more Azure and it's very challenging for because of the Azure passes, because if you don't have everything there on time, um, well, it, it will be hard for the students to keep up everything. So uh, I basically, I try to check if I have everything there that I need. Um, if I have local VMs, I try to check the, the laptops or the desktops to check if they have all the, the VMs installed. And that's it. And usually I test like one, two machines. And because it's when I usually I have like classes of 12, 14, 15, 16 students. And it's very hard for me to check all the VMs for everything. And some of the courses that I teach have like four VMs per module. So that will be impossible for me to teach in the time frame okay, that I have. 
All right, and apart from that, uh, I also set up my own machine, uh, open my OneDrive, so I can always have my uh, PowerPoint slides there, and uh, open some extra material for the students, like a link list. So, a lot of information. Yeah. Talk to the mic. Ah, that's even better. <laughs> you make <laughs> yeah, okay. it. Really I can talk to this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so one, one of the things that I do as part of my setup for a class is I actually always set up a share on the on the desktop, like on, on the instructor machine. And it's just a habit that I've got into. I, I can't remember who introduced me to it. As with most of these things, it becomes a, you know, like a, someone gave you a good idea at one point. So one of the things that I always do is I set up a share, and in that share I put in a, a document, just a text file, which is links.txt. And so when I do my introduction to the class, I point them to the share on the instructor machine and throughout the week, you know, if there's any useful shares, links, that sort of thing that come up, put it into that. So at the end of the week, they have not only obviously what we've covered in the class, but all the additional material that we've added in, that we've discovered. And it's, I always find that you always, no matter how many times you've done a course, there's always something new that you find. So when you get to that, you put it in. You go, right, okay, well, so this is something yeah. that we... A lot of the discovered. students yeah. uh, add yeah, to yeah, that as well. Absolutely, so, yeah. yeah so. Well, that's what my OneDrive is for, so I yeah. can have it yep. and just open it so it's ready and I always add extra things yep. and if link's not, not long working, I'll remove it and students have access after the course. So what I'm trying to do, because I'm delivering training for different uh, training centers, uh, visiting first time in different countries, the first thing, well, I'm, I'm not scared uh, um, only about the, the technical things, set up virtual machines or so. I, I think this is a, something, a, a secondary objective for me, because finally we're managing to, 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 to do everything from yeah technical point. But um, I'm especially interested to, to learn as much as possible between uh, starting a training and uh, till the, the first break, to learn about the, the, the students' profiles about the, the, their expectations, because if, even if I'm asking, visiting a training center for the first time, okay, please share something about the student's profile, they're not doing this usually. Or uh, just providing a list of names and companies and so, but nothing about the student's profile. And uh, th this is something that could be very different. For example, I do have experience training for some military organizations, yeah. When students are showing up, in all of them in the uniform, and say, please introduce yourself. They say, I'm Captain Johnson, unit 516, uh, and um, uh, something about your, your assignment. Yes, I'm a TLC uh, level three, and uh, after uh, and about your expectations, well, after that, uh, I'll be maybe a TLCS level five. Okay. Well, that's it's, that's it's very important to, to learn something about, to, to, to make them to share something about their experience, their expectations in the, in the training. Yeah. And this is not any time. It's creating a communication bridge with the students. I think this is the most important thing we have to do when you're starting a, a training. Uh, learning about, especially if you have uh, people in the room, uh, different culture. Yeah, it's important. I do remember one time starting a, starting a class somewhere in, uh, in the southeastern part of India, and um, I started to, to, uh, to talk to the students, to present, and say, oh, okay, the presenting the, the course agenda, I, I did ask them, everything is okay, uh, clear, and they say, yes, <laughs> yes. I was very confused first time, and after that I was, I was asking, Somebody in there. They say, oh, no, everything is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's something about the culture in Italy, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so you want to know about, uh, about the students, because if you, if you ask it, the HR manager, mostly they say, well, they're great, they're the best, and, and they can do all, everything they need to do, but from the whole product, that's like this part. So what kind of questions do you ask to check, or any one of you? Uh, many times it has uh, happened to first me. First, state your name. Uh, I'm George, George Simos. I'm from Greece, 
I live here in Thessaloniki. I'm an IT pro MCT. Uh, I'm five years old, not so lo old as you. <laughs> Six, to be precise. Now, uh, about profiling the, the people George has mentioned, it's, it's very crucial in, because many people are coming in the trainings with an agenda of questions. They want to solve their own questions or their burdens in their job. So you have to ask what are their expectations. It's crucial, especially for the IT pro guys. I don't know about the developers, I'm not one. So keep this in mind. You have to ask everyone what expects or what has in their mind, because some are, not, are shy and don't, don't want to share something. But you can take it out by asking. And okay. the, the flip side of that as well is that that then gives you a chance to, <laughs> that, that thing. Yeah, it gives you a chance to, to determine whether their expectation for the course is actually wrong. You know, you've, you've had that before. We've had people, I've had people come into a class and, you know, they, they're, they're after something that's completely different from what's actually in the course. Now, de depending on what the course is, you may be able to meld what they're after into that. But if you don't ask, you don't know. And, and they're going to be really disappointed by the end of the week mm -hmm. if you haven't touched on whatever it was that they really wanted. Mm -hmm. so. And there's another point that there may be people for, with yeah. different backgrounds and uh, uh, experiences. Mm -hmm. So someone may come in a 300 level, for example, uh, training, but he has a background of 200 tops. Mm -hmm. So others may be lower than that. So you have to find a fine uh, silver line yep. <laughs> to deliver the training. And this is something that we usually have to deal with every time. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, I once had a lady in class, in an Office 365 class, and she came in and she introduced herself and she said, well, um, actually, I'm, I'm here for... Um, Office 365 for my company. I said, oh, what does your company do? Well, I work with um, uh, professionals and I have a one-person company. <laughs> and I work with professionals and we all want to have Office 365. And then they came to the 346, <laughs> which is a class for um, <laughs> environments of 5,000 people. And so you hear that during the, when they introduce themselves. and. And one of the first things you do is you contact the training center. You say, hey, this person is in the wrong class. This shouldn't be here. So she's contacted and yeah, she stayed up to lunch because lunch is very good at the training center. <laughs> and then after that, they, they helped her do something else. What was for her? And it was not a disruption in my class because, well, everything was technical and she wasn't technical. And... She had a way better experience, and, and obviously all the others as well. That's the best thing to do. That's the best thing to do. I know. Others? So one of, one of the things that I do as part of that introduction is as we're going around, so I, I ask standard questions. Like, you know, the, the, the mock content has the slide which has, yep. this is yeah. what you wrote. And I say, well, that's, that's okay, but to break that ice to get people on board. So I ask them for their, their name. A lot of the time you have people from the same organisation, so by the time you get to the third person from the same organisation, they go, yeah, I, you know, I'm so-and-so, I work with him. You know, I'm so-and-so, yeah. I do the same thing that she does. And you go, okay, well, that's, that's not really helpful now. So what I, I start off with your name, where you're from, so what organisation, just so I can get that, get, get that out of the way, um, what your experience is in whatever the product is that we're, that's in the, in the course but then um, what you know if and the way I, I frame it is if when you were told you were coming on the course what was it that you went great I'll be able to you know in, and, and fill in the blank and so that then kind of encourages people out and depending on on because I always have a chat with the students before we start I'll also you know maybe say something like what's something that, that someone wouldn't know about you by looking at you and then it sort of breaks that ice, 
and it gives you something else to be able to hold on to for the rest of the week as well. So, you know, we have people, I've had people that, that are professional parachutists after hours, you know, like sort of like outside of the, the, the class. And so it then means like the way I deliver, I always deliver with a little bit of humour. Um, I, I try to make sure I don't offend people, but I'm Australian, so I offend everyone. So <laughs> the, the, but, but we, like, you know, I'll, so I'll hold on to that. And I said, well, so if, you, you know, if you're wanting to deploy a machine before you jump out of the plane, how do you do? What, you know, so pull that sort of thing in. So pull their stories in, and then it breaks the ice. It gets people to talk. So, yeah. And the training starts when the first student comes into the classroom. Because then you have your first interaction, and you start talking. You don't prepare all the things. Well, you prepare, of course, but when the first student comes in, you're too late preparing. Yeah. So start talking, and the ice is broken immediately. I always, I always ask them uh, yeah. in, in that list yeah. that you were mentioning, what is your first operating system you started off yeah. with? And then you always get the ZX Spectrums, the Commodores, but every now and then you get someone that says, yeah, well, Windows 7 was my first. Yeah. yeah. yeah? And, and why is that important? Well, it's very hard to give examples of MT4 to a Windows 7 person. Yeah. Same with uh, everything we have to do on the, the command line or in PowerShell. That, that's new to them because they used to click around. Yes, but you have to say the story. Yeah. Well, you, you make a different story. You've got stories enough. My name is Robert. Okay. <laughs> it's the trick one. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's work. Huh? Yeah, it's double. Cause they have to do something as well, I believe. Uh, no? Doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, it does. There you go. I have a few uh, questions to ask them with this introduction is um, about the experience. On Monday morning next week, what's the problem that you want to solve with this product? Yeah, we have a problem with this and this. Good. On Wednesday, we're going to go deeper into that subject, for example. And also, to break the ice, I ask, uh, what do you do in your spare time? And it could be everything about photos, could be... Like hobbies. Shootings, yeah, whatever. Yeah. When they start talking to each other. And also, I, I give them, uh, I don't know what to say, but I don't want to stand here and just deliver. We have around 10 people, and we are, you are a lot smarter you together than me alone. So share your experience between each other. And also because I have a memory as a goldfish, I wrote <laughs> a drawing a map of uh, the tables. And I write their names and also some key words. He was want to have this experience with the product and he's doing this and this. So then I can say their name. By you hope that they will sit at the same spot the next day? Yeah, they are. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be a problem. Thanks. Um, I always use the name tents for that. And if there aren't, just take an A4 paper and, and uh, say we're going to do a little origami to start off with. And they're all like, what? And you say, fold it in two. And then you ask them to fold it in two again, and there are always a few that do it like this, but just the simple name to end, and it's done. Then only their given name, not their whole family name, because my eyes are not that good anymore, and if they're sitting in the back row, I have no clue what they're given. Sometimes you have them, the training center provides them. Yeah, Sometimes but uh, if you have them, if you draw, draw a map, you can write the, some keywords that you were interested in this. In this I thing. do both. So, yeah. Anyone else? Any speci uh, special questions you ask them? This is mostly what, what, what happens. Yeah. You know, when you ask a question, it's so silent. It's, it's and, like and, and if you don't want them silent, then... then I, I, can, I should tell you something. Usually I do... Usually I tell a joke on that time that is 
uh, who is going to be the voluntary that I'm going to choose to answer the question, so. <laughs> you can do the same. Of course. Yeah, Sasha. Writing, writing your name is okay, but I, uh, sorry Mark, uh, I remember uh, you mentioned uh, bringing donuts to, um, to the no, classroom. No donuts. no donuts. It was, ah, croissant, yeah, you're right, sorry. And that is one uh, same, icebreaker yeah. as, as, as well, that, 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 that's good. Well, donuts, whatever. Yeah. Treats. That's, I, I consider that bribery, but okay. <laughs> but it works. It works. Cultural <laughs> differences. Yeah. The French, the French are more polite. That's it, right? Are they? So the Swiss, at least. Yeah. Swiss French. <laughs> so what's what's the other advantage of asking for the expectations? The volunteer? See, it's working. Yeah. I'm a great teacher, see? Yeah. No, that's, how can you meet expectations if you don't know them? Yeah. It's also, how, how can you adjust the expectations? Yes, yeah. Yeah. of course. Yeah. That's, that's, that's like yeah. that they're in the, in the right classroom. Yeah. Yeah. But if they wait until Friday to tell you that they came for something else, you know, you can't make up for that when the class starts on Monday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're telling that. I, I'm, I'm working at some training centers where they actually have a first day eval and an end of class eval just to see what's going on, what uh, things need to be adjusted or not. The, the idea of it. Oops. The, the idea of actually having is that actually that has some problems over now. Okay. Okay. But the idea of having an EVA at the beginning is actually not a bad idea. Um, not, not for the center or for the actual course, but just for the trainer. It's not a bad idea to just put a sheet of paper down and get them evaluated. Things like, what is your experience with this technology? Sort of mark one to five. Five is very experienced and one isn't. And that kind of thing. And then afterwards, just take the pieces of paper, even ask them to write their names. So that you can kind of kill a whole lot of birds with one stone. While you're sort of introducing yourself and the day and the agenda and something. Okay. Now Mark wants to say. <laughs> and then Mark the Russell. Oh, it's a bit off topic, but uh, did anyone get uh, asked to fill an evaluation about your students, so for you to evaluate your students? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. How do you respond to that? So, um, I, I, had a, I had it before the, yes. the, yeah, the yeah, end yeah. of the class. I had before where we've been asked, like, you know, how did the class go with the students, how do you rate the students? Um, and if you know that that's coming, you've got to be far more aware of what the students are actually doing because presumably it's because they've got an outcome. It's normally because it's a, a, it's a closed course or something like that where, the, where management actually wants to have the students know something by the end. Um, so, yeah, so it's, it's, you, it means you've got to be far more active with the students as you would, than you would normally during the, during the week. But as in, Obviously, we care about the students normally, but you have to make sure you're dry, trying to draw the information out to make sure they're learning through it throughout the week. So. In Australia, it's actually very common. Speak up a little, you're a trainer. <laughs> yeah, in, in Australia, it's common to, to have to evaluate your students, especially with government and things like that, because they want them to meet their KPIs. And they have KPIs like, did this person learn to create a library in SharePoint? And at the end of the week, you have to kind of evaluate the student. Did the student actually learn to create a library? And if you say yes, the expectation is next week that student can come to work and create libraries in SharePoint. Yeah. Um, so not uncommon at all, depending on who you're working for. And actually about uh, a questionnaire or a small test, um, recently I did a shortened version of a 2347 
and of 365 uh, course. And I was asked uh, after the first day to make a small test to see what the students remembered of the first day, if they did their homework, because it was split up and they needed to keep a page because they had to certify. I made 10 questions, put them somewhere on the internet. There was a report coming and showed some of them really worked hard, others didn't. Um, and it showed, most of all, can they read? But it was quite okay to do that. And the students were really enthusiastic to make the questions, were really uh, motivated on learning even more just by giving a few questions. Yeah. So that could help as well. But that's, yeah. uh, that is something that on VLT you have uh, video learning training. We, in the end of each module, there is always some quiz or something so that people can um, can do and uh, that that's very motivating for students because they can answer questions that they weren't supposed to answer like before they they, they watch that video or something and we know that people are transitioned to video training but we can also grab some of the stuff that's used on video learning based training and put it on the class okay i, I use a lot of quizzes just yeah. just because of that yeah, yeah. actually Thiago, every single mock has a question at the end of the module, except yeah. that I stopped using them 15 years ago. Yeah. Well, and why is that? The, some of the questions. They're useless. That, some of the questions that you have on the mock um, are quite open, to be honest. At least the ones that I teach, and it will take like forever when you have like 15 students in the class. So I tend to basically use some of that questions on my quizzes so that they can answer, and then and then I just discuss a little bit with some of them. But that I use some of those questions and I incorporate it just in a different format. I just don't show the PowerPoint, okay? There is a function height in PowerPoint that's great. It's a great one. Yeah. We tend to use it quite often, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so from my experience, uh, to share something, uh, virtual academy, Microsoft Virtual Academy videos and uh, trainings are sometimes useful. Uh, because, um, well, if I do have the contact details of the, 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 my students before the class, I'm recommending, yeah, maybe one week ago, one week before take starting please. the class, yeah, take, please, take, have a look. So it could be useful. Um, about the evaluations, the yeah, assessments, actually. I do prepare any time an assessment for, for the students, but actually not a single one. After they are introducing themselves, and I do learn my experience, I have, uh, I have different set of uh, assessments, yeah, because sometimes they are not able to, to, to answer the questions that they put in the assessment. So I have to prepare any time different sets of assessments. I always say, for those guys, this one is good. Can you spell Yeah, something like that. Sometimes it's yes. But uh, I can share you uh, even about the, the evaluation of the the instructor process. I did learn, uh, especially the, my experience with some military organizations, uh, on, uh, on um, Wednesday morning, there is an evaluation process. Uh, you are sent out as a trainer from the class uh, to, to have a coffee or something like that, and uh, the training manager, um, he or she is discussing uh, with the, the, the students, the attendees, how the class is going. Uh, they are evaluating you as a trainer, and you are staying outside, and the training manager came to you and said, um, yeah, you are good to go, George. You are good to go. You, you, you still continue the class to deliver the class. <laughs> Something that, it's funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, some, somehow I don't believe that, but... <laughs> Never attended one of my classes. <laughs> no, well, is this an invitation? You know the rates. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's, let's skip that one. Um, so, the what is quite obvious. Yeah, we talk, we note everything. The when, how much time do we take for it? Is it like a minute, okay, we're through it, or who's using uh, one minute per student? 
five minutes. It, 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 it really depends on what they're telling. Minutes. Yes, if, if, if I think I think it's a very important moment on the training, so that I can make a student just to oh let's finish next. Okay, I, I usually I let them speak. Of course, no one is going to there stay there like for five or six minutes to speak about themselves. Uh, well, most well, of them some people <laughs> want to. Uh, okay, but well. Yeah. In that rare cases, of course, we can just say, oh, yeah, thank you very much, and politely we interrupt the, the person. Uh, but uh, usually I think it's a very important moment, so I think that if they want to talk, because it's very good data that then I can use to better approach them when, I, when I'm teaching my class. I tend to ask them uh, what kind of projects they're working on currently. So they explain, okay, we're going to implement Office 365 or I was at a, a Dutch uh, company, uh, a big insurance company, and they said, well, we're going to take our data center and we're going to put it in Azure. Like, okay, that's interesting. They have like a giant sling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just like that. And it has to be done before the end of the year. Yeah. Because management decided. Yeah. So, you know, you know what they're doing, why they're there, and some are just, you know, seeing whether the technology is something for their company or, no, I have to be here. They sent me and I have to be here. And then they're in the back row, yeah. RDPing into the machines in the front row. And every question you ask them, it's, uh, I don't know. And then they're back behind the screen. And that's, well, the training manager said it was hard to drag on a dead horse. So that was, luckily. Yeah. But so it's also where you find out that there might be, like, sorry, for how long, how long you spend, it depends, there's been some on the course. Like, so I've, I've had some courses that I've run where I've had, uh, where I've had uh, 40 people in the class. Now, 40 people in the class, and that was a five-day class that was a very <laughs> packed class, you can't, go around the room and introduce, you get everyone to introduce, but you need to know something about them. So in that sort of case, they're actually sort of more throwing out the general questions. Who here is from a partner? Who here is from, you know, Microsoft customer? Are you doing implementation? Are you doing, so you still get a f feel, but without having to go individually. Um, and, and that then gives you some targets to be able to talk to yeah. later on as well. I, so. I, can, I teach, uh, I teach one, one class for Microsoft Western Europe that usually I have like 40 to 50 people in my class, three days. And usually I send them like a quiz, okay, for them to fill in and then I should like some, some, some very uh, nice charts. So saying that, oh, X people are from here, and then I try during the, the coffee breaks, okay, to mingle with the, with the students to get some more feedback because it's like, like you said, Kyle, it's impossible for you to being each one of them, or we'll spend like two hours uh, doing that, and you don't have that, those two hours. 39 students in Haiti, they were still rebuilding the school after the earthquake around us. The paint was sticking to the laptops, and the laptop were installed with Linux. Two weeks. Yeah. Interesting time. Yeah, fun time, fun time. Yeah. You have a... Uh, Okay, I don't know about you guys, I'm as we know, probably not by now. Uh, what I was thinking here is what I'm doing when I'm starting on Monday morning. Uh, because we're getting a list and we know from which company it's everybody, I tend to separate the people that are coming from the same company. So instead of in separated places around the room. Why? Because I want to create a team out of the whole group I have. So. If you have parts it's like uh, three people from one company, two people from another company, five people from another company sitting at the same place, then you're creating parts since they're not making that you don't have created a group and they don't get the same feeling. But if you spread them around, then you can create a team out of them. And you can be the leader of this team for the next day of the week and meet their expectations more easily because they're going to discuss and talk about common problems, especially when we have these slides that say, engage the students in a discussion. I don't know if you do that, but, uh, but thinking what I'm doing and 
getting in mind that I'm using a lot of the stuff you already said, just I want to add my two pennies on the discussion. And when it uh, became a group, I mostly uh, suggest them to, to start like a, a WhatsApp group for the class. So that they, after class, can still connect with each other because they're all in the same type of situation, having to implement a new product. And, well, they can just ask each other instead of yeah, reinventing the wheel all the time. Any one of you using that or no? It's, it's an interesting one. And especially when you get yourself in the group as well, you get so much information again. I can tell you something. A few years ago, uh, I used something. I, this is like, I'll call this anonymous or something. I have to confess this to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I used to use Yammer to that, do that. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry. Oh. You're the guy. <laughs> I was the one. You were the one. <laughs> How, yeah, how, but how is it named today? <laughs> that's that's a very good question. That's, I don't know. <laughs> but I, I have a sticker saying Yammer if you want. <laughs> yeah, you know what it means in Dutch, don't you? No. What a pity. <laughs> the the yeah. word Yammer means what a pity. Okay. So. Completely accurate. <laughs> yeah. but continue. Yeah. No, the, so the, the the other thing that um, like along those lines, so like, like I have in the past where I've had, um, uh, and this is back in the early days where we, in Australia there was a big push for the, the career changes, the people that were getting out of the you know getting out of, of you know, industries and coming into IT and then yeah. went back afterwards because there was no money. But the, <laughs> but like for those groups, we would do like sort of. A, Back in the day, it was a Yahoo group we'd set up, so like where, where people would then participate and that sort of thing. And it was interesting to see that after they'd finished, like the the course, and like the course for that for those would be, you know, one week, um, in a month, but it would be a, over three months. They do like you know three weeks of, of training. Um, by the time they, they finished and everyone sort of went their separate ways, people would still you know a year later would still be participating in that, and you'd be able to see where people were at and that sort of thing. So. Um, but yeah, I think that depends on, on, on the group. As to yeah, if you, if you yeah. build a group I, out of it. And I yeah. get something, it depends also on the training center because there are training centers that do not allow you to do that. True. Yeah, so I have several that I, I can't do something like that. Mm. Yeah, because it, it's data from the students, oh. yeah. okay? Yeah. And, and even if it's the student initiate the content that they don't want you to promote because then they will contact and they, they, you will keep contact with the students and uh, they, they, they don't know there is something called LinkedIn. So. Yeah. I never, yeah. I never used to uh, make a group or let the students really collaborate with each other after a course because the most of the times when I proposed this, uh, there was most of them technical level three or four hundred students, and they were very reluctant and very private. And yeah. no, I'm the smart one. I'm going to do this. So very solo. But now our training company has implemented a big system about logging in to the website and see where you have to follow the course because they're specialized in long-term uh, solutions. But they also have make per default for every course a group where they can collaborate and send messages to each other. And what I see is that the technical level 50 and 100 courses much more communicate with each other than the technical level 3 or 400. So every time there's a uh, MTA group or whatever, they immediately share information about, well, uh, I'm going to do the exam next week, and uh, wh what did you get? And they all collaborated with each other. Technical level 3, 400, not so much. In general, we actually find that in, in not not in the training industry, because I think in, in in like as trainers, we share a lot more information. But when I've been like working, you know, like in the help desk support, you know, second, third level support, etc., you would find someone like a lot of people who, as they rose through the ranks, would be very much. I'm not going to tell you that because if I tell you that. That makes me less important. You're not going to come to me, and then I might I might lose my job tomorrow because you know what I know. So, like, I think that's that's an, an industry thing. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I will never tell you anything. Like that. <laughs> so it makes knowledge yeah. the differentiator. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think so. Like sort of as as we get more as we get more knowledge that 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 there is a tendency, you know, a, a, apart from this audience, there is a tendency within our industry to be able to like to start closing that in. Now, obviously, we're the exceptions to that rule because we pass knowledge on for a living. So, you know, like that's that's the difference between yeah. you know between us and them. <laughs> us and <laughs> but, them. <laughs> but yeah. like, it, it seems yeah. like sort of the the further up you get, that that's that seems to be a common thing that that I see anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's like back in school when they were yeah, yeah, writing yeah, their yeah, tests yeah, like that. Yeah. 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 So, Nobody can know. Yeah. What I wonder is. Do you ask specifically if uh, a student is planning on taking the exam? Because yeah. I usually do, and if there are a lot of students prepping for the exam, I especially go through the exam topics and give some extra tips. Um, if there are no people, no students wanting to do the exam, I leave that out because it takes time. Yeah. But the time I invest on that creates, well, sort of getting us on the same wavelength and I'd rather spend a lot of time doing that and have a smooth running course, I'll catch up later on. That will be no problem. But I specifically go into uh, the exams and if people are doubting, oh, do I want to take the exam or not? I try to say, well, we're doing the course now. If you think about doing an exam later on, you have to start all over again. So if you are in doubt, schedule the exam, do the exam. I, I yeah. have to say that I don't need the yeah. microphone. But for the recording. Yeah. Or are you going to say something that shouldn't well, be recorded? Well, it, it, yeah. in my experience, it, yeah. uh, trainees are not quite sincere about that. So you are, you're asking them if they're interested in getting certified. Half of them may answer no. But in the evals, they say yes. Yeah, it's it's True. crazy. So yeah. I always throw all the tips inside yeah. the yeah. Du during the course. So yeah. it's a little uh, tricky. True. Yeah. I don't know if you have experienced it, but I've I've seen yeah, it many really, times. Because I think I think it yeah. depends a lot on the culture. Yeah, it's a cultural yeah. thing. Yeah. I, as you yeah. know, I, I yeah. deliver training across Europe, and I can see that certain countries that's totally true. You know, yeah. I know where <laughs> you are talking about, and, um, <laughs> and I can say offline, not recording. Okay, yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, and, yeah, I, yeah. and basically, and basically, other countries they they are more honest um, on that part. Yeah, but that, I don't know why, but it's yeah. probably it's a cultural thing. I don't know. Yeah, it happens. Yes. Yes. So, so, to yeah. be honest, to be honest, I'm very happy when I do learn at the end of the training that people are saying. At the beginning of training, they say, oh, I'm not interested at all in, yeah. in, in testing. I can see them. It's like a something personal yeah. success, let's see. Yeah. I can see them, oh, maybe next month I'm planning to, 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 do, to have an exam. So mm -hmm. it's something that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you feel you proud feel, about you it. You feel yeah. proud, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And you should. Sure. Sure. And you always uh, tell about uh, the value of certification, obviously. Absolutely. It's a recording. Yes, of course, because you are working hard the full week. To create an attitude, yeah, because they are saying, "Oh, maybe an exam. I never pass an exam. Maybe it's uh, they yeah. have some fears. Maybe it's difficult." So, but at the end of the training, that, that feel you must be happy if you succeed mm -hmm. yeah, to the induce yeah. Yeah. And, and, this idea. And, 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 maybe I'll be. It's good to be certified, and maybe I'll, I'll be able to pass the and, exam. And mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes it's more dismystified. What is the exam, and how the exam works, and all of that? Because everyone here already did an exam, a Microsoft exam for the first time, or else no one will be here. And the thing is, uh, the first time that I did an exam, I was like totally at, at the blinds. I, I didn't know what it was, how it worked and everything. And, 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 and I was like, like George, like saying, like really nervous, okay? And, but the, the second time I was like, oh, I already know what it is and how hard it is or less hard than it is. And, and I think we need to pass that information for the students because sometimes the students are like just too afraid of failing. And because they fail on an exam, they will be seen as people that do not know how to do their job. Okay? And 
it, passing an exam doesn't mean that you're not able to do your job. Okay, it's two, di two different things. And I think it's dismystify this for them so that they can be more, uh, more uh, uh, let's just say, with courage uh, yeah, to do yeah. the exam. On the other hand, I'm very proud when I'm seeing this because, you know, most of the people passing the exam, they never attend training. They are focused just on, just on certification. They are learning different stuff, brain dumps and so on, and going directly to, to the exam. And I feel very, pr I'm, I feel very proud yeah. when people are coming to, yeah, following the, the recommended uh, track, yeah, attending the training, and after that going to, to pass the exam. Well, it, this is even from the business perspective, it's very good for us, yeah, because we're yes. not earning as a trainers too much money from people not attending training, yeah, just going to, to pass the exam. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's Have you um, ever used those uh, YouTube videos of that lady explaining the questions? If you ever have, you will know, because she has that Liberty. awful Liberty. voice. Liberty. No, it's not Liberty, it's just she, you have a big... Uh, a small video and it says yeah and then you take here and you put it there and then you can man there are like 10, <laughs> ten movies microsoft learning made them like 10 movies oh. the voice of that lady yeah. what i usually use is one of the videos and one of the blog posts of liberty munson to explain how the exams work because when i tell my students that yeah each question has the same value blah 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 they know oh, it's not like that because some guy told me and another trainer told yeah. me and i said okay so this is the person in microsoft that generates and creates the whole exams the uh, only one with psycho part. in her name this is psychometrics <laughs> yeah so i just i just give her the link where she has a, she has a video where she explains all that in a blog post then I said, read. And then they say, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah. Yes. And, and usually that's what I do for them. And they, they, they feel that and they, they, that's one of the things that, okay, now I know. And I'm absolutely sure because it's the person that does this, that telling is not like a trainer. No, no, no. It's one more saying yeah. that it can be invented something or, yeah. yeah. Liberty. Liberty Monster. Liberty Monster, yeah. 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 Liberty as, as part of that as well, like sort of it's, it's a bit of demystifying what the exam is like the exam obviously is important but but one of the things that that i find is if you've got people who, who haven't done certification exams before what they see is like if the last exam they did was a school exam was a university exam they get one shot at it like you know they get one go and if, yeah. if they don't pass then it's you know that they, they failed uni or they failed you know like school or whatever you know they had to repeat yeah. the whole thing whereas um it's that assurance that yes you know if you've got the knowledge go do the exam but equally if you don't pass the first time, that doesn't mean that you lose your job. It doesn't mean that, that, that you know, you, you, you've got to go and repeat the, the whole learning and that sort of thing. It just means that there'll be something you need to fill in and you need to go and, and you know, go do the exam again, but you can go do that again. And the part of what I've done recently is a, is a few sort of exam cram type sessions and that has been an important thing to, to re reassure people that, that when, so like, yeah, if, if you don't pass, that's okay. Like you get another go, you know, you can go and do do another go at it. And like, of yes. course, especially when you had the second shot, you just said, them, "Hey, it's one where you look at what the exam is and the yeah. topics and how they ask it, and where you have to study extra." Or, or, or when there was the, uh, the the four goes at the exam, which by the time you got to the fourth go of the exam, surely you knew everything that was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you've had all the questions yeah, by yeah, then. Yeah, four. So yeah. I think it was five, right? Because it, you could take the exam and more four. Yeah. Oh, yeah, do, I think so. Do you, do you still remember the adaptive exam? Yes. That yeah. took about 10 minutes to pass yep. the whole exam and 12 minutes to do the, the survey. You knew if you were going past the 10 minutes that you were in trouble because yeah. people yeah. Yeah, asked yeah, exactly the same question. Minutes. It's like, oh, oh no. no. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. The why. Is there? Why do we ask all these questions? A few of the answers were already there, but why? Well, in my opinion, no training is the same. Only the course number is the same. But every time you deliver a course, it's different. And you need to know the starting point of the students. Where do they begin? Where are they? You have to adjust the training to every situation. 
So I think that's why you ask. Yeah. Mm. Just to, to make your own job easier. Them. Yeah. Yeah. It's not totally for them, but a lot for us. Of course, yeah. for them. Yeah. yeah. It's recorded, I know. <laughs> it also means, like, say, <laughs> like if, if you've got a closed course, like, the, say, for instance, there was um, some of the classes that I've done in the past that would have an upgrade, like an upgrade module. And if no one in the class was actually using the upgrade, like the previous version of the, of the, yeah. of the, of the, the, the product, then the, if they weren't looking for it from a, from a certification perspective, then it was something that, that we could take time for things that they did use yeah. as opposed to things they didn't mm -hmm. use. So. Yeah. I use that all the time in you know, one, one of the SharePoint courses, you have a module in the end that is upgrading from the previous versions and sometimes I get students that never work with SharePoint at all and they, they, they are from a customer, they are not a consulting company, so they will never have the previous version there, so it doesn't matter for you to teach that for them, so I usually use that time for other, uh, for other stuff, usually for like some uh, yes. questions about exam yeah. or just ask me anything yeah. that you want to know yeah. or yeah. something like that. Okay. And, what, and what about that situation where you you have those students and they told their life story or whatever version of it <laughs> and then you have the prerequisites and you already know that they don't meet the prerequisites for the class. Yes. Yeah, it, it gives you an easier way to tell them, okay, you don't know that, you don't know that, well, we can get into that, but it will take a little time. So it might be that you have to do something at home. Yeah. And that's very useful when you have 30 hours for a 60 hour yeah. class. Yeah, yeah, what I additionally Which never say, happened. what I additionally say is, if I go too fast, please say it immediately. But if yes. I go too slow, don't hesitate to say that as well. Because I want to explain everything, of course. And you see the time running out. I always yeah. finish on time, but you can't spend all the time on one subject. So they can interfere a bit. Mm -hmm. And if their knowledge or their expectation is almost the same, you can adjust the speed of certain parts in the course. And they can assist you in that. Yeah, so if there's one student that knows more about a certain topic than you, which happens every now and then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, them tell. yeah, Utilize them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's better than, uh, like I saw on Facebook, uh, John had that student again. <laughs> you know? And we all know what that student means, don't we? <laughs> There's always one. So how, you, how do you work with that? And that's not a rhetorical question. <laughs> no, but if you have that student that knows everything, and before you ask the question, he already answers it. Why, why, why should you not do what he does to you? Make a very, 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 very impossible hard question to answer to them. <laughs> you refer to Sheldon, aren't you? Hmm? You refer to Sheldon, that one episode of Sheldon? Uh, the question, what do you know? Yeah. I got a brain fart. <laughs> so I, I, I think with, with those sort of students, and, and we, we, have all, we've, we have all had those, those people in the class, my, my approach is, is softly, softly to start off with. You kind of, you try nicely to start off with. But if that doesn't work, then you've got to find some way. If you can't use them, if you can't draw them in, if they're just being... And I'm going to use an offensive word. If they're just going to be smart asses, <laughs> sorry. No, it's it's allowed. It's allowed. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's, it, was, it was on the offensive list. So um, the 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 it, like if if that's who they are, then you you have to try and shut them down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And, yeah. And, it, yeah. Be, and 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 how, and how do you shut them down? I I mostly take them aside during a break and yeah. say, well, I ask a lot of questions. It's not that I need to know the answers because otherwise I wouldn't ask the question. Yeah. But you know, it's to make you think. Uh, let's do it this way first. Uh, let some others, and then if I need the answer, I'll ask you. So, like I, I remember distinctly one of my first classes that I that I that I ran um, as like you know when when I was. First starting in as an MCT, I was, and it was one of my first classes on my own where I had no one else shadowing me or anything like that. 
and I had it was a it was a Windows Server course. I can't remember what version, but Windows Server course. And there was a guy who was in the course who was from uh, who was Novell background, and so it kind of gives you the age, right? But the the but and and so those old these guys. <laughs> so ev every time that. The, you know, I would bring something up. He would go, "Ah, oh, doesn't that's not how we do it." Like <laughs> it's much better in this. Now, like yeah. in, in my case, like fortunately, like, and and you could, you know, you can always see when other people are getting frustrated by it. And in my case, I was fortunate because my background had also been in Novell. So at that stage, I was a CNE, so Novelle. I was able to, I, I was able to turn that around and say, and, and you know, basically go back you know, and say like, well, this is how we do blah, blah, blah in this, but this is what it's in here. And you can kind of see like in his case, that was enough to be able to start in quiet. And then eventually I, I, you know, I had to say, look, we're, we're on a Windows course. You, did you know that when you signed up? Yeah. <laughs> because they, you know, they, they, and, and yes, it's important to know how that relates to what you, what you know, but we're here about Windows and everyone else in the class is here for Windows, yeah. so. So but what 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 Marco was uh, what Marco was saying about uh, uh, trying to get the student in the for example in the <laughs> sorry <Yeah. laughs> uh, to get to get the student like in the coffee break and then we're like a talk etc. So I, I I have a student that is a very famous student in Portugal. He works for NATO, and basically is always attending trainings because uh, their colleagues. Uh, don't like to work with him uh, because it's so boring. <laughs> yes. So then they ship us to us to them to, for us to take care of him. And and basically, I will not shut up. Sorry, it's Mark. No. And basically, and basically, uh, uh, one time I got the student and all the guys from the training <laughs> institute were like, "Ah, you the guy!" <laughs> and I was like, it was my first time with him. And I was like, I didn't knew that. So, uh, and I, like at the second day, the guy was so, so, so annoying that I had a talk with him and, and basically I sorted out things with him and I said, oh, well, you have to give time to the other persons to answer and this is a Microsoft course that I have students from several companies, not just you, not just one company. So we really need to go forward or else, because I was like, in, I should be like in module three, I was already in module like one still, because he, did, he didn't allow me to go, okay? So I had like yeah. that, that talk with him and yeah, everything went uh, went well. And I'm already speaking. You, you should have given him a mic and then muted it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just want to thank our sponsors again and thank you all for being here. This was the last session. We have now some words from Elias and uh, thank you. Thank you. And thank you.